Well, welcome back to my shed. It's holiday time for me, but I thought I'd speak to you. Uh, as I've had time to tidy the shed, why not speak to you from it? As I reflect upon the events of Holy Week and Easter, what a wonderful time we had. How great was the prayer labyrinth at Tresillium, which took us inside the stories of that Holy Week and enabled us to pray and reflect in a different way. And how great that that could then be used for children on Good Friday, again to help them understand something of the love that God has for them, shown in Jesus Christ. How wonderful it was to share communion on, on Monday Thursday in the afternoon and then use the same loaves of bread uh, in the evening with the cast of the crossroads and then again at Tresillion uh, later that evening, binding one congregation together in the body of Christ. Then there was the Good Friday Reflections, Taze at, uh, at Tresillion, and our own watching at the cross on the Friday morning. And then the crossroad itself, the musical on third, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. It's going to live long in the memory of so many of us. And our Easter morning celebrations, high on the top of the car park overlooking the city and praying for Truro. Then quietly in our eight o'clock communion, and our exuberant worship at 10.30 when we all gathered, all praising the risen Lord. The Lord is risen, he's risen indeed, Alleluia. And the wonderful thing is he is just as risen today as he was then. He's just as risen today for your life and for my life as he was on Easter Sunday itself. And although traditionally people call this Sunday after Easter as low Sunday, there is really no reason why it should be, for Jesus is still risen. Jesus is still alive. Jesus is still with us. Jesus is still transforming our experiences. Jesus has still defeated death and has overcome sin. So why do we sometimes find it hard to keep hold of that exuberant realism of the risen Christ day by day? Let me just read you a few verses from Luke's Gospel, chapter 24, after Jesus has risen. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. And that's it, of course. If Jesus pitched up in this moment, physically stand, standing amongst us, we would have no difficulty at all in understanding that Jesus is alive and our exuberance would remain uh, throughout the year. But for most of us, that isn't our experience. For most of us, Jesus, we don't see the risen Christ physically like those disciples did that day. So this evening, we're going to explore together how it is that we know that Jesus is alive. How we know it is that he is risen and amongst us. And the first way that I want to remind us that sometimes we can experience the risen Christ coming to us is that he actually sometimes seems to call our name. Do you remember that story that we remembered together last Sunday from John's Gospel? Uh, Mary's been to the tomb, she's found the body missing, she's gone to the disciples, they've come and looked and they've gone home and they've left Mary there and she's weeping thinking the body has simply been removed. Jesus appears and says, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you're looking for? And thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you've put him and I will go and get him. And Jesus said to her, Mary. And we remembered last Sunday just how important it is to know that Jesus called your name. We reminded ourselves how God knows each of our needs and each of our longings and each of our fears and each of our anxieties as well as our joys. And it seems to me that there are times when Christ comes to us and we know Christ is there. We hear him speak into our heads, perhaps not a physical uh, voice, but some people do hear that, but at least a, a conviction that we are held by God. You know, after Easter Sunday uh, communion, we had an Easter breakfast for 80 people in the, in the church hall. It was a wonderful occasion. And then I came out from there and the, the church was beginning to buzz, getting ready for Easter morning service. And there seemed to be children everywhere. Um, and, and they were all talking. And then someone shouted, Dad. And I turned round 
and it happened to be one of my children. Now you will understand that there was a time in my life where when any, anyone called out dad I simply assumed it was one of my children. We have hundreds of them. Uh, but this was one of mine. Now how did I pick out that voice, my name, from all the other names? My, that voice from all the other voices? Because I recognised the voice of my own child. Christian people can learn to recognise the voice of God speaking to them. The risen Christ will come and get our attention, sometimes by calling our name, by nudging us in the ribs, by encouraging us to listen. So just as those first disciples experienced a physical Jesus risen amongst them that night, let's not write that off. It may not be a physical Jesus. But the risen Christ can come to us very real, very close, almost tangible, as he calls our name.